The Oklahoma City Thunder defeated the Golden State Warriors 125 to 105. Uh, beat them soundly. And that's good for the Warriors. I think that's good for the Warriors. That's good for the league. A lot of you guys automatically thought the Warriors were just going to have a clear run to the finals and they were going to just dominate every single chance they got or whatever the case is. And that's not happening. You know, they're... They're playing great basketball. They have one of the best records in the in the um, NBA. I think they're still first. Houston's creeping up right behind them, maybe a half game behind them. But they have competition, guys, and that's good. That's good for the league. What Kevin Durant said about the Golden State Warriors joining forces was good for the league. It was true because that forced every other team to up the ante. Oklahoma City Thunder, what they did. They went and got Melo. They got Paul George. They're a formidable team. The Rockets, they went and traded for CP3. And now you have James Harden and CP3 tandem. So it forced everybody in the league to get better. And by George, they've gotten better. Oklahoma City Thunder and the Houston Rockets are contenders. And we have to accept that. Now, Oklahoma City Thunder, they're not consistent. That's what might take them out of the race to become becoming a contender and being looked at as serious. And in terms of on-paper talent-wise and taking it to the Warriors, they're contenders to beat the Warriors in the playoffs. If the Warriors seen them in the second round of the playoffs, that's a matchup they wouldn't want, want to have. As far as the Houston Rockets, it's the same deal. You know, the Warriors, you know, they lost to the Rockets twice. Think about this, Trevor Reza didn't play one of those games and they were missing another player, so Gerald Green. So that being said, they're also contenders to beat the Warriors. Now, can they beat them and get the best out of seven? That remains to be seen, but there's competition. And it looks like, once again, in the Western Conference, that's going to be our NBA Finals. Because the NBA Finals wasn't that competitive, but the Western Conference Finals, you know, before Kawhi Leonard got hurt, and the year before that, that was better than the NBA Finals. Because even though Cleveland overcame a 3-1 deficit, you know, that, that seven-game series between Oklahoma City Thunder and the Golden State Warriors before Kevin Durant joined, like, two years ago, Man, that was amazing series. It was just play after play, triple doubles. Clay uh, Thompson with 45 points. You you guys remember that? It was just an epic series, like so many epic moments. It was better than the NBA Finals, honestly, because there was no suspensions, no nothing, just straight play, balling, going crazy. In the West, there's competition, and I love it. I I love it to death. And it's, it's going to be a guillotine for whatever team that comes out the West. They're, they're going to be very weak when they go to NBA Finals. It's not going to, where is that going to sweep through the, through the uh, playoffs? Because as you can see, the competition has ramped up. And the Warriors need to up the ante. They need to stop being disinterested when they have to play these teams that are gunning for them. Sometimes you got to send a message. And you got to do it 100% tenfold. You can't just be half-assing it. Jeremiah Green getting a technical, getting injected. You can't, you can't have that. This is, this is a competition, competitive spirit. These guys are coming for you. You got to play a lot harder when you're facing top-end competition. Like, you'll notice when we play the Nuggets, when they play the Pelicans. You know, they go top-end, but then after a while, they ramp it up. And then against these top-end teams, Paul George is dancing on their defense, and they're not, they're not really fouling hard. They're just going through the motions. I guess it's because of the All-Star break. But I like the fact that now you guys see why the game isn't just played on paper, ladies and gentlemen. You have to play the games. It's not just a foregone conclusion. And that's the one thing I hate about the NBA. Well, it's just going to be Golden State Cleveland. Newsflash, guys. We might not have a Golden State and Cleveland NBA Finals. You know what I'm saying? Golden State Cavaliers Finals. We might not have it this year. And that's just because of the fact that the way that both teams have been playing uh, as of late. Golden State, you know, they're still formidable. They're still a great team. But they got competition now. Word of warning to the Oklahoma City Thunder and to the Houston Rockets. Golden State is playing very disinterested now. Every, all those games I watched them play against the, those two teams, they didn't. It didn't look like they gave it their all. So if you get a locked and loaded Golden State where everybody's locked in, I don't. I don't know how that's gonna play out. It's sort of like the little brother and the big brother. Like, you know, you guys might play basketball a lot, like ten times, and the big brother always whooping you, always whooping you, always whooping you. And then the little brother gets a couple games. He gets like a lot, a lot of confidence. He's really kind. Yeah. I'm the man. I'm this. I'm that. I'm whooping your butt. And then the big brother's like, oh, okay. You won two games. Is this how you, you want to play it? Okay. And then in the next five games, you don't score a basket. And I just want Oklahoma City Thunder and the Houston Rockets. You know, it's like Leonardo DiCaprio and J Django. He's like, you know, 
he said you you sparked my interest but now you got my curiosity you know what i'm saying like it's it's that that phrase now i'm really gonna go in on you now i'm gonna show you how i really play so those teams need to be careful Cleveland Cavaliers, of course, we can't go a day without talking about their drama. They blow an 18-point lead. They they got outscored. I think they only put, scored nine points in the fourth quarter or the second. We get fourth quarter. They got outscored by 39 points. This is like a bad uh, story from like Baby Boy. With the, with you, you know, you got your baby mama crazy cussing you out. LeBron James reportedly cussed out upper executives because they weren't telling them what was going to happen with the team. And this is exactly like like a bad relationship. You got a baby daddy, Dan Gilbert, a baby mama, a LeBron James. LeBron James is acting like, just like a baby mama, cussing you out, giving you a hard time, won't give you a commitment. You know what I'm saying? LeBron James is refusing to waive his no trade clause. He's trying to protect himself because he doesn't want to get traded. That's just the bottom line. He wants to leave Cleveland on his terms. So like that baby mama where, you know, the dad wants to do things for his son or daughter, but she's like, no, you need to come here when I tell you to come here. You need to give me the money when I tell you to give me the money. And that's what's going on with the whole LeBron James saga situation. It's, a, it's a, the Cleveland Cavaliers are the baby. LeBron James is the baby mama. Dan Gilbert's the daddy. And the baby mama is trying to hold the daddy hostage. She's trying to use the baby as a pawn. So basically, LeBron James is using his no trade contract and not giving a commitment so he could do use the baby to hurt Dan Gilbert when he's just really hurting the baby, which is the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's, they're, they're hurting the team with all their antics. LeBron James is not going to stay there. It's a foregone conclusion. He wouldn't waive his no trade clause because he know Dan Gilbert would trade him in a heartbeat because LeBron is holding the organization hostage. He's been holding the organization hostage for the past two, three years now. And Dan Gilbert's tired of it. So he's trying, Dan Gilbert's trying to take it to court like, like a baby daddy. He's like, no, put me on child support. I don't give a damn. Put me on child support. I want to see my child. I want visitation, this, that, and third. And LeBron James is a blocker. So now that we see that he doesn't want to waive his no trade clause, guys, you can stop with all the hypocrisy about LeBron James and him and this, that, and third in mobility. Basically, it's an ego trip. You don't want to be there anyway, but he doesn't want to get traded to a team that he doesn't. You know what I'm saying? He he'll waive his no trade clause. He would waive his no trade clause if it was like, oh, we'll send you to Golden State. We'll send you to Houston. He knows Dan Gilbert will not trade him to a place that he wants to go. Dan Gilbert will probably trade him to the Pelicans. He'll probably trade him to the New York Knicks. He will trade him to the Orlando Magic and, and get back the whole Magic team before he sends him to somewhere that he wants to play at. So LeBron James, being the man that he is, very smart in that regard, he's like, you know what? Nope, I'm gonna take my destiny in my old hands and I'm gonna hold this against you. So when he leaves, he's gonna be like, well, I tried with the squad we had and this, that, and the third. But when, if he lands on the Golden State or Houston or San Antonio, you know, we're already sitting here. We told you so. So this is like an ugly, ugly custody battle. It's really disgusting. And it's on both ends, but it's more so to me on LeBron James and because just commit or quit. If you quit, you can get traded now and just stop wasting everybody's time. And Dan Gilbert, I understand where he's coming from. He, three years, three NBA finals, one title, it's a success. And it's just, his relationship has run its course. Now, it's time to sell or do whatever you want to do. And that's it. This is popcorn for me. This is every day I'm eating popcorn because it's drama filled, drama, 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 drama. It's, I love it. It's like you're getting basketball, but then you're getting that drama aspect where we've never seen this before. We've seen players go at each other, people talking smack, Chris Childs, you know, punching Kobe in the face, whatever the case is. But this never, never, never seen owner against player over a team. So it's this is the best custody battle. This is the best divorce court I've ever watched in my life. And I'm just loving it. Let me know what you feel below. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hoop Junction. We're hoops, me too,